Hey guys, so uh, I'm gonna be reviewing the Flash 802, and it just finished the point time we're recording this. And holy crap, <laughs> this is an amazing episode. I was so worried about this episode because normally in past seasons the premiere is amazing, and then the second episode is kind of like it goes down a little bit. This episode was a hundred times better than the premiere for me as a fan, as a viewer. Holy. <laughs> Frack, this was amazing. I have had, I cannot stop smiling over how amazing this episode was. The writing was amazing. There were some scenes that could have been better. I'm going to go over all that in this video. If you enjoyed the video, hit, play, yeah, hit the like button down below, Sky, if you're new. I, I cannot stop smiling over this episode because it is so, like, I'm actually pumped for the next episode. <laughs> um, So, yeah, <laughs> if you haven't seen the episode... Click on this video now, go watch it, and then come right back and watch my words for my review. Because, holy cow, this is an amazing episode, as I still like 10 times by now. Enjoy this video. So, um, we have a lot to get to. Um, pretty much opened up with, um, we're in the last episode with Despero telling Bear that he has seven days to, um, prove to Despero that he's not evil. And... If he doesn't, Des Des Despero will kill Barry. Um, Despero will end up pushing Barry to the ground with one push. Um, basically to see how much force it would take to really kill Barry. Um, and Despero said that Barry is driven in the, in the anger in the future. And with his power advancing beyond anything possible. Um, Despero is saying that tomorrow, the point in time in the episode. Um, it was sort of the same day as 801 took place. Um, something will happen to Barry that affects the future, like losing someone or something. Despero will be watching Barry the entire time, waiting for him to crack. So he's basically, like, expecting him to. Which, I'm so glad they put this in, because if you watch my 801 review, and I think a couple episodes, videos I did after that, I was bringing up the point, why would he come back now, 10 years earlier? Might not, like, a year earlier, something along those lines? This set that right in the motion. I'm so glad they brought that in the spotlight. So, writers, you're doing a good job. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> Alex um, was mentioned uh, helping look for Despero. There's been nothing like him before on Earth Prime. I'm um, just interested to see that even Supergirl, we haven't dealt with anything like this before. I'm um, just interested that Alex brought that up. Frost believes that Despero is right, that Barry will turn evil and just dis destroy everything. Um, so he doesn't... She's thinking, along with Chester, that what happened to 702 with Barry's speed thinking, where he became too fast and it corrupted his mind and he wasn't... He attacked Team Flash. Again, repeated 702. Um, and Barry's promising that that won't happen. Or, or at least, consciously, it won't happen. Um... It fast forwards to the next day, the next morning, when Barry and Iris wake up, or I guess Iris, they, I think they said they didn't sleep, but it's the next day, um, and where it's a day where something's planned to happen to Barry. Barry's worried about Iris, because he's thinking that if he's going to be driven so far into the dark, Iris will be the one that dies and pushes him over. Um... Iris mentions that Cecile and Jenna are having a tough time. We're all expecting it to have something to do with Joe. We got that answered at the end of the episode. Now I'll be talking about that in a couple minutes. <laughs> um, the CC bank was robbed. Uh, Kramer actually suspended Barry. It was robbed by a psychic meta. Um, Kramer suspended Barry for apparently Barry being under federal crimes related to... Um, I think it was... Cream, um, for Carter back in season 7 I guess they were expecting Carter they, they found evidence to show that Carter had someone helping him on the outside and there was evidence leaning towards Barry helping Carter um, which is why he's suspended Barry didn't want to put it up he didn't want to give up the badge to give up the job um, but this is the beginning and the end because Despero showed up, mind punking Barry, watching him, and he also stayed earlier, like a little bit after this, that him losing his job was the beginning of the end for Barry's mind. Um, Kramer mentions that Joe is gone, and saying that if he was here, 
um, she'd be doing things differently, or, you know, what Joe would be saying to Kramer if he was here. Again, lean to the point that he's dead, um, or supposedly dead, but we're supposed to be thinking at the point on this episode. Um, to see how much that she's going through something, again, that feeling with Joe being dead back, and the thing that I didn't really notice until the end of the episode, I'll see with what happened, I'll talk about it in a minute, but what happened, I didn't really connect the dots to Barry's emotions until the end of the episode, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, because it was very good acting, and I didn't realize it until the episode. But there's definitely a connection between the two, and I'll talk about it in a minute. Um, Despo was mind picking Barry again, is saying that, um, again, like I said earlier, Despo confirmed that it's the beginning of the end with Barry losing his job. Um, Barry goes to see the person, the psychic meta, and he ended up running into, um, or sorry, he... He meant the person who got attacked by the psychic meta. And then we got a call that Star Labs is shutting down. <coughs> and uh, COVID. Um, <laughs> uh, apparently, f they were laying it back to season four when Fallout um, happened in nearly sort of city. I think it was 409 or 410, um, where Barry was on the trial of the Flash, when the episode was called. And the nuke meta fallout exploded. And it nearly destroyed the entire silly city. But because the Flash was there, he saved it. Um, but that day, Central City put in effect something to do with Star Labs. To where if something didn't seem safe, they would shut it down right away. Um, and it's, I guess nothing's bad happened there. At least publicly until that. So I guess that's why they're doing it now. Um, something went wrong with the radiation scanners in Star Labs. They didn't realize it now, till now. Um, but if they didn't realize it, everyone there would have been in the ICU by the next day. Which, pretty good writing there. <laughs> um, and they said they're going to demolish Star Labs. So this is more than likely the last episode of Star Labs that we're going to get. Um, because, well, they can't go back in there. So who knows what they're going to do with that. Um, they're going to try to get anything that connects the Flash to Star Labs out of there before the people who are cleaning it up and destroying it find out. Um, they brought Gideon back, which is very good to see, um, the robot version, <laughs> um, that we've seen in the wall from the future that Thawne brought back in season one. We've been seeing it throughout the show. Um, Barry talked to her and Barry had put holographic walls like the one for the Time Vault in the Cortex and the Speed Lab. Um, now something I want to point out, the writing here was amazing. If you didn't realize it, you didn't watch the show fully. In season three, Flashpoint, the Bean Lab was added. But if you remember, Harry said, in season three, that the Bean Lab would not be on any blueprint for Star Labs because the timeline changed. So, and it's different on Earth too. So, they somehow made the Speed Lab not be on any blueprints, which is why they had that one scene where the holographic wall was up and it was just like a server in front of the door there. Um, that's why they didn't think anything of it, like they did with the Cortex, and why they said, on the blueprints, there's a building, there's another area here, it must have been closed off or destroyed. But the Speed Lab's not on the blueprint because they never did anything publicly with it. That was a good scene they put in and I don't think you, you might have put it together if you haven't seen season three, but with season three being put in place, I think that helped people who watch season three understand the scene more. At least for me, it did. Um, Gideon uh, apparently had to erase herself and everything in Star Labs, um, again, including herself, to protect Barry's identity as a Flash. I think this leads to Barry creating Gideon. I would be honestly surprised if it didn't. Um, and then we learned that the psychic meta... And Gideon said goodbye to Barry, which was a good goodbye, and I'm glad they did it. Um, then we learned more about the psychic meta that attacked the bank guys from Iris, because obviously they can't use Star Labs. Um, Barry confronted the psychic, and this is the scene that did not really have good writing. And I saw a lot of people being pissed off about it. I wasn't really pissed off about it, but I was kind of questioning why 
they did it this way to where he just ran in, talked to her, and then he just ran right towards her. And then I'm assuming he got whammied or whatever. He ended up in the loft and apparently he was attacking Allegra, Chester, and Kate. And he nearly threw a lightning bolt at Chester because Chester missed. He threw a lightning bolt, but he missed. And then Allegra shot Barry and he flew into a wall and woke up there. So instead of going after the meta, he woke up, or he never left the loft, I guess that's what they're saying. Um, Caitlin scans Barry's mind to make sure he's back, and he was, and then Barry runs off, confronts Despero, um, and Despero talks about his planet that was overrun by evil, um, and Despero said that he spared someone's life, I don't remember the exact name, but he spared someone's life on his planet, and in doing so, it created more loss on his planet. Um, and so, B Despero was banished here. And that to Earth. And then Future Barry destroyed his new home. Which he doesn't want to happen again. With this, with this, the first home that he had. On his other planet. Um, so, that's why he's doing all this. Chester and Lycra set up comms in the garage. Chester's garage. Um... Now, Frost, early in the episode, asked Chester, to make, asked Chester to make a weapon to stop Despero to harm him. And Chester, um, we learn, I don't know if we've learned this before, but he's a pacifist. If you don't know what that means, it means it's someone who believes to not do harm. Like, you believe that war and um, violence is n not the way and you're never going to have anything to do with it. He started believing in that because when he was younger, he made a weapon that caused a lot of damage to a lot of people. So he doesn't want to go back to that. And that was a good scene. I'm so glad they put that in. Um, then the CCPD transport got taken over by the psychic meta. Um, and he's making everyone act like zombies. They're just not acting human pretty much. Um, and we learned the meta had telekinesis. And Barry was lifted up in the air. And... Well, he can't create lightning because there's no friction in the air. Um, unless, like, this part, the writing could have been a little bit better. But just to clarify it more, when Barry's just in the air and he he's not running, like if he's running up a building and he jumps off of it, he still has lightning because he already has that friction. It's already going. But when he's lifted up in the air and he doesn't have his speed, he didn't use it before he went up, he had no friction. So that was that part there. It took me like a minute to try to figure it out because I'm like, he's been in the air with his speed. <laughs> like, that that's nothing new to the show. And I was like, oh, okay, he, he needs the lightning. He needs the friction from the ground before he goes in the air. That part made sense once I figured it out. I don't know if, I know a lot of people probably didn't figure that out right away. But I want to clarify that right now. That was that scene. <laughs> okay? That's what that scene was. That's why it was what it was. And the writing there. I think it could have been a little bit better. But, yeah. Um, Barry ended up creating his own friction in the air. Instead of generating friction off the ground. Um, by phasing his lightning in him in the air. Um, to create the lightning around him. And he was going to hold it on. He's going to hold the lightning onto him. And, like, he's a super battery, pretty much. And just... He's, like, he's supercharged. Um, and then Barry laying on the ground in really amazing pose. And <laughs> all his energy just went everywhere. Did, knocked out the meta and damaged a couple police cars. And then Barry ran off. Um, knocking down the meta, Barry got her in cuffs. Then we go to the garage. They talked about the meta being down. And how Allegra was hungry, I think it was, and they should all get something to eat. Barry brought up Joe. And Chester confirmed that Joe was dead. He's been dead for six months. He died on May 23rd, 2021. Which, I believe, was a week after the Godspeed War. So that doesn't, that doesn't mean Joe died during the Godspeed War, because he didn't. If they're going off of the timeline of the show... It was somewhere around a week after the Gospel War ended where Joe died. By whatever cause, we don't know. But Barry doesn't remember it. <laughs> and, um, 
everyone believes Joe's dead. Everyone in the world believes Joe's dead, but Barry. Um, and Barry, Iris said that Barry supposedly gave the eulogy at Joe's funeral, and he doesn't remember it at all. And Barry's, like, going through trauma. He's, like, it's a, it's a really heartfelt scene with Barry. Because I think we were all expecting Joe at one point in the show, if he were to die, that Barry's reaction would either A, be the same as it was when Henry died in season two, or B, even worse. And we didn't get to see that. So having this scene in there, seeing Barry had the realization that, oh my God, my adoptive dad is dead. <laughs> like seeing that and him not remembering it, that trauma going through him. That was the push that Despo was waiting for. And that was an amazing scene towards the end episode. I'm so glad they put it in at the end. Um, Barry, and then a news report came on. And it showed that Barry, after stopping the meta, attacked the city. Attacked innocent people, throwing his lightning at people. Knocked several people out. A lot of them were injured. None of them died, luckily. But they very well could have. And... So now Barry's public enemy number one. And I totally didn't copy that line from the new Spider-Man No Way Home trailer. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is what Despo was waiting for. He was waiting for Barry to attack innocent people. And somehow, some way, Barry's mind is being taken over. And this is what's causing that. Um, Despo attacked Barry in Cecile's house, I guess. Now it's not Joe's because he's dead. If he is really dead, who the hell knows? But, um, shot a laser at Barry, and then Cecile tried to attack Despero with her powers. Despero put Cecile to sleep right away. Um, and then, uh, Chester, Cecile, Iris, and Allegra, or Tristan and Allegra come in, use some device to, um, put down Despero for, like, a couple seconds, Barry ran away as fast as he could, and Despero couldn't find him. They brought Alex up to speed, um, and we found out that Despero is a Kalinorian. Never been seen before on any of these shows. The, Alex never even heard of it. The D.O. never heard of it. She mentioned that John and Kara are off-world, which is a good thing to put in. Chester, Iris, and Seal are worried that what, what Bear will be like if he ever comes back. Obviously, he will come back to Central City. And to Team Flash, but what will he be like? And that's what they're all worried about after what happened in Central City. Um, Barry goes to the Hall of Justice, and Black Lightning shows up, and Barry says that um, the injustice is happening. Um, and from the promo, I'll do a full video on it uh, later this week, but yeah, it's going to be a pretty missing episode. <laughs> Um, now one of the things I wanted to mention relating to, um, the connection to Joe dying and Barry's reaction around it. I don't remember entirely in 801, and maybe it was in 801 where Barry had that connection, but in 802, if you looked at Barry's reaction when he was with Cecile, and when, I think it was maybe when he was with Iris... He had that reaction like he didn't know what they were talking about. I didn't get that until at the end of the episode when we realized that, oh my god, Joe's dead. <laughs> that massive blow up on the face. Like, what the hell? I didn't really notice Grant's reaction throughout the entire, or Barry's reaction throughout the entire episode. But he did have a reaction. If you go back and watch 802, again, I don't remember 801. Maybe because Barry's mind wasn't taken over yet. But in 802... You can see Barry questioning what the hell Cecile and Iris are talking about. Like when Iris said that Jen and Cecile are not doing well because of what happened. He didn't remember it. Even when Kramer brought up that if Joe was here, what he would tell her to do and what the right thing to do would be. Even Barry's reaction was like, what the hell is she talking about? What happened to Joe? And then all these distractions came up. So he never actually got to ask the question. That was brought up again with Iris, with Kramer, and Cecile. And then at the end of the episode, obviously, Chester popped it out of nowhere. Well, it wasn't out of nowhere. It's pretty good writing, but you get what I mean. And Barry's reaction, as I said earlier, was just a mess. <laughs> In a good way, though. In a good way. I'm glad if, 
I'm glad they gave him that reaction because that's how he should react if he just found out Joe died. Even though they didn't put a death scene in for Joe, we know he's going to be in this season. He's a series regular. He's in the title card. His names are in the credits. So if he's not dead, he's in the season. If he is dead, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, I guess flashbacks? I, I don't know. It, it's so messed up right now. But, yeah. Now, I just... I, I took a... I literally just paused the recording. You guys didn't see any difference, but I paused for like two minutes. Look at Twitter for a minute. I want to make something clear, because I saw Paige talking about it on Twitter. I want to make it clear in this video now. Armageddon, the writing's not lazy. You have to remember the show is from Barry's point of view. Just because it didn't show Joe dying, or because, um, like, seeing Barry's reaction to that, it doesn't mean the writing's necessarily bad. Um... And what I mean by that is that if when Barry didn't know, we shouldn't know. I mean, we shouldn't have known that Joe died if Barry didn't know. I mean, that's the point we're trying to make. This show is from Barry's POV. Just because um, Joe being killed off screen in Armageddon, it doesn't mean the writing is lazy or bad. What it means is that because Barry didn't know... We don't know. That is his show. That is what the show is about. Looking at it from Barry's point of view. And that is what Paige is trying to say. Is what I'm trying to say. Want to make that clear now. <laughs> um, but this episode was amazing. And again, I would rate it higher than 8 to 1. A lot of the scenes. I, I don't know if it's because of a crossover. Or if this is how the scene is going to be. But I'm really excited for 803. It's going to be like 100 times better than this episode, probably. Um, so I'm definitely um, excited to see that. Um, and especially wondering if Barry... If, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's confirmed that Joe's dead. I think it's fair to say Joe's dead. How he's going to come back. So maybe the timeline, Barry time travels, the future stops Armageddon. Comes back, Joe's alive. I don't know. <laughs> Something happened between Armageddon and the Godspeed War. But Joe connected that's affecting Armageddon. Whether that's Thawn, I would believe it, honestly. But what the hell would kill Joe? It, it, it would have to be Thawne. I don't see any other possibility of Joe dying. Past Thawne. I, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but like I said, this episode was amazing. Let me know your thoughts by down below. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Have a good night. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.